And I don't want to do what's wrong, but I find myself leaning that way. Now, he uses the analogy, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You know, the Romans ordinarily executed people by crucifixion. In fact, in one day, the Roman general Crassus crucified 6,000 people on the southern road to Rome. 6,000 in one day. That was their preferred method of execution. However, they reserved one for the very worst of the worst of the worst criminals that was used to cause direct vengeance on a killer. And it was called the body of death. If you were sentenced to the body of death for killing someone, they would take that person, I'll ruin your lunch yet, they would take that person and they would chain you to that person face to face with that corpse. Face to face, arm to arm, leg to leg. Boy, it almost sounds like a Masonic ritual. Face to face, shoulder to shoulder. But, uh, John, you remember how that goes, don't you? A third degree initiation. Put your foot on the other, right near the other person's foot, and uh, the the uh, thighs, and uh, you know, bend over, like kind of give them a bizarre hug, you know. My bone. You know, yeah, whisper the secret word. Death penalty to say it above a whisper, so you whisper it. But the, you know, I think we got something here. I'd never thought of this before. The body of death. That's exactly what they did. But they chained you to the corpse until the bacteria started to work and would infect the living person, the murderer, and the corpse would kill the living person. That bacteria would spread over and you'd start getting, you'd start rotting alive. Now isn't that terrible? Paul used that analogy when he said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And it was called the body of death. I know he was referring to that because he said, you know, it is so critical. The contrast is so great. I want to do the heavenly things. I want to be right all the time. I want to be close to God. But I've got this flesh that's chained to my soul. What hope is there for me as long as I'm chained to this flesh that always wants to go wrong? And if you don't think it does, just let somebody cut you off in traffic sometime. Right? Or get thinking about some of the things they do. Maybe in these abortuaries, these places. There's such a thing as righteous consternation, but I don't think we should load and lock and go and knock these people off. Let God take care of it. You understand what I'm saying? The flesh wants to go the wrong way, the wrong way, the wrong way. And the Apostle Paul is saying, who's going to deliver us from that? We have to wear this thing until the Lord calls us and sets us free. Now, he gives us the answer. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now, he says this, there is therefore. See, he goes right to the next chapter to continue the thought. I'll read just a few verses here. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Capitalized there. Spirit. Capitalized. Meaning you have the Holy Ghost. You've got two spirits now. Amen. For the law of the Spirit of the life of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Notice his flesh was not sinful, but he had the likeness of sinful flesh. 
and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What's he saying here? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's what gives you peace and that's what gives you life when you're spiritually minded. We need two spirits. You know, uh, it says carnally minded here. That word carnal comes from the word carnivorous. Carnivorous refers to meat, something that eats meat. So to be carnally minded would be to say you're a meathead. Right? Okay? Just a thought. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It totally disregards all the law. It says anything goes. You're okay, I'm okay. If it feels good, do it. All those profound philosophies, right? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You know what the problem is? Down the street there at the Catholic Church, those people all have one spirit, unless they picked up a lot of demons along the way, then they got a whole bunch of them. The point is you need two and no more. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you can't have a demon. I don't care what anybody says. You may have a spirit that you think is the Holy Ghost, but when you get to church and you start boogieing around and, and going crazy in there with some demon, you can't even tell the difference. There's trouble, right? Verse 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. See the word if there? The biggest word in the English language is if. If. If only I would have prayed. If only I would have repented. Boy, that's going to be a big word on Judgment Day, isn't it? If only. That if guy, you know, makes all the difference. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. But you see, to have the Spirit of Christ all over you and leading you and you love God, that's wonderful. But let him in. I am with you. We know the Lord's with us, don't we? I am with you, but I shall be in you. And when that happens, you're going to know it. Nobody's going to have to tell you it happened. And nobody can tell you it can't happen and didn't happen. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit, see it's capitalized there, isn't it, is life because of righteousness. And now he says this beautiful verse. But if, he's always using that word if. If. 